Hello, everybody. Welcome to week two of Playing Games with Strangers. I'm your DM this evening. My name is John Haru. Uh, I'll be leading you through the uh, pits of torture and dismemberment that is Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Uh, with us tonight, as we did last week, we have J.S. Earls, world-famous authors. Stop saying world-famous. Dude, you've been published. It's been sold in <laughs> countries other than here. Uh, that's world-famous. <laughs> that's right. Okay. That's the world. Uh, that that cackle you just heard was uh, was uh, Steve McDonald, world famous bus driver and mm-hmm. podcaster. Yeah, for, yep. for over ten years, we just discussed that. Strangersandaliens.com. Yeah, he he podcasts while he drives a bus. <laughs> I, I podcast well. I podcast very well. Uh, vocal talents of uh, Kate. I forgot your last name. All of a sudden, I am so sorry. <laughs> it's Sirinsky. So oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just put a couple letters in there, and you're you're basically done. Uh, we we will just refer to her as Squid. All right. Very wonderful. Only an Illinois famous author, but you know, I'm working my way up. But world famous voice actor because we all know that Supersonic Pod Comics has been all over the world at this point. Boom. And then uh, also world famous voice actor, Josiah Crandall. That's right. That's me. The one you. who's probably going to get us sued by Disney I, because I, of his I, <laughs> Yes, exactly. Lawsuit's coming. So do we have any announcements to make before we uh, light this candle? I'm pregnant. I sprained my finger this week. All right, then. (laughs) (laughs) Well, with then, without any uh, further ado, we will go into our next edition of Playing Games with Strangers. Alright, well, uh, to recap last week, uh, we started out in the town of Waterdeep. Orbog Towerfall had started out by arriving in Waterdeep to investigate a rising darkness that his uh, his uh, temple had since was rising. Led him to an inn at which he found a fighting pit and he encountered a... I can never pronounce it. A human-looking individual. A human-looking individual named Callum, who had an aversion to most clerics and paladins that he encountered. Also staying at this inn was Gareth, who is also a paladin. And they were all watching as a bugbear named Pooh proceeded to beat the life out of the reigning champion, ignoring warnings from the local organized crime family to take a dive who was then apprehended by said family. After some conversation, they were instructed to acquire what was lost in the bet on this fight, although they have no idea what this particular item is. Led them to an encounter with some cultists outside of a house, and that is where we left off. What time What time of night is it right now? I would say it is probably about 9.30 in the evening. And uh, the people we killed are the only are the only like sentient beings or anything we see outside, right? Uh, make a perception check. I rolled a thirteen on that. Eleven. All right. You guys look around to uh, see if there was anybody else that was outside of the building, uh, and you don't see any, as uh, or I'll just put it, sentient beings. Although you can hear some shouts of what sounds like uh, people running to go get help because there was a massive fight in the middle of the street. 
Well, I'm still trying to get this jacket on me that I took out, or the, the hood up off of one of these guys. Because you're doing the fat bugbear in a little coat. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Are we all going to do that? Try to dress up as uh, them in these bloody co- coats? <laughs> that is currently my plan. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll move up behind the buildings just to see if there is a back door to this place instead of uh, through the front. All right. Um, as you approach the rear side of the building, uh, you see that there is, in fact, not a back door. Unfortunate. No windows or anything? Nothing? Oh, there's windows. I walk over to Gareth. What do you think? Do you think I can pass? And I, uh, I turn around slowly so he can admire my disguise. Uh, I'd like you to... So if you're, if you're trying to use this as a disguise, here? Go, ahead, go ahead and roll a performance check for me, please. That would be a 14. Uh, Gareth, you as he as this bugbear spins around in front of you, uh, from the front side, it does look like the robe fits him very well. But as he turns, you see that the back is completely split in half. And he's essentially wearing two sides of a robe, on, one on each side of his body. Well, do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, what, are we going to fake like he captured all three of us? <laughs> uh, okay, who's the brains of this outfit? I'm going to hop the fence to the back of this building <laughs> while I these guys stand on the she's, street. She's just going to do whatever. Yeah. He. Uh, okay, Gareth, go ahead and make a acrobatics check, please, as you hop this fence. Um, my name's Callum. Sorry, Gareth can too if you'd like. If you want to hop Callum, the fence. I would like you to make an acrobatics check as you hop this fence to the backyard. We're starting out I, strong tonight. I'd guys. sure like to make it. Oh, that's quite good compared to my last one. That'll be a 19 to All get right. over this fence. Orbog, as you as you look down the uh, uh, as you look down the side alley of between the two houses here, you watch as uh, Callum does a flip over the fence with some unnecessary flair. Uh, I guess, yeah, I'll I'll follow after. All right. I just, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get over (laughs) the fence either. How how tall is this fence that I've just so miraculously flipped over? About three feet. Oh, (laughs) sick. Wonderful. (laughs) Right. That's not a fence. (laughs) Alright, so okay. uh, Pooh and Gareth, are you guys going to be joining yeah, them? Or? I don't know what's going on. I take the other guy's coat and I'm, I go, Hey, Gareth, uh, maybe you should put this one on. It looks about your size. <laughs> Why don't we just follow them? Follow who? Oh! The other two. Yes, I, I see them now. Well, I suppose that uh, that would work and so i just uh meander over after them and i just step over that fence like no nobody's business no he made us roll you have to roll (laughs) i got i got a 13 by the way a 13 you aptly climb over the three foot fence good it's not as not as beautiful as what i accomplished no Uh, not a non non non-natural 20 uh Oh. Uh, it's no yeah, problem. he, you just you, you watch you watch Pooh just kind of jump up in the air and land on the other side without even touching the fence. Uh, I'm going to take a look in the windows to see if I can see people moving about inside. Um, okay, go ahead and make a perception check. I rolled a or seventeen, actually, by the way. Actually, an investigation, not a perception, because you are investigating. Well, I rolled a natural 19, so if I was perceiving, it would be very good. But uh, for investigation, that's just a 19. All right. Um, as you look in through this window, you see a uh, kitchen. And uh, you don't see anybody in there, just a standard kitchen. Do these windows appear to open, or are they just solid panes? They're just solid panes. What do you see in there? I see a kitchen. Oh, a kitchen. I'm going to cast silence on myself, and then I'm going to break the window. All right. Go ahead and roll an attack roll, please. Oh, boy. I'm very good at attacking. 
That would be a natural 20. Wow. <laughs> I'm so good at attacking windows. You <laughs> got all the glass. That stove is dead. That inanimate object felt your wrath, I oh. promise you. Go ahead and roll damage for your nat 20 and double it, please. I sure will. That will be nine damage to the window. Go ahead. So, yeah, you watch as uh, Callum smacks this window, and where you expect to hear the familiar sound of shattering glass, uh, no sound at all. But that glass shatters like safety glass. And, uh, yeah, it's completely obliterated. There's no glass around the hole. Uh, you have a broken window. I will look to the others and point inside. You want us to go in there? I don't hear you speak. <laughs> I don't take notice that you don't how, hear how me big, speak. How big is your radius? How big is the radius of your spell? It is a 20 foot radius. Oh, oh. yeah. So, Pooh, when you when you go to say, I don't think, you, or when you go to say whatever you were going to say, mm -hmm. uh, your mouth moves, but there's no sound coming out of it at all. I uh, then proceed to go up to the window and try to measure my body against to see if we're, I can... We're going to we're gonna have a poo. In we're going to push poo into the we're window. Have, we have the yeah. classic poo stuck <laughs> in the rabbit's hole. I believe. Huh? Right, so I'm I'm trying to see if I can get through. Uh, I, I'm I'm not sticking myself in. I'm just trying to see if I think I can fit in. What is the size of this? I'll roll investigation. I, guess. I was about to say, make an perception. investigation check. Perception, for probably right. Uh, it's a yes. Please. It's a four. I rolled very poorly. You to you totally could fit through there easily. I I try to fit through there. All right. Um. <laughs> Go ahead and make a strength check. Okay. I, I, I am pretty good at those. Or a strength save, rather. Um, that'd be an 18. Oh, an 18. You all watch as the bugbear tries to push himself through this window. Um, it's a lot like watching a... It's, it's a lot like watching a St. Bernard try to push its way through a cat door. <laughs> um, but with a lot of struggling and cracking the drywall uh, the bugbear does manage to break his way through and widen the window for everybody else. And how much noise did he make? None. None because you're still in the uh, oh. of silence. So I uh, I get in and I just uh, kind of dust off my hands and I think to myself What a wonderful <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I can't anytime someone says I think to myself that's the next thing that comes to mind. Go ahead, I'm sorry I stepped on you. No, no, no. You, you, that was much better than what I was going to say. <laughs> I will step through after as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to Garrett. Good luck with oh, that. Oh, I can't. Yeah, you, well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to draw on the ground. I'm going <laughs> to show that, like, point, like, people might be coming. And then one of us, I was trying to motion to both of us like which, like should one of us like stay and watch or, or while the other one goes in and I'm kind of like pointing all this stuff out okay. but I mean that, that sounds like a pretty complicated right, right, um, that's, that's why so <laughs> I, I would like you to roll a performance check at disadvantage uh, well, okay, it would be the 9 then, no, which would be 11 my other one was 18 okay, and Gareth, I'd like you to make a perception check, please. Perception, I rolled an 11. Yeah, you're, you're able to get the general gist of what Orbog is trying to tell you, that maybe someone should stay outside and keep watch. Um, I, I, I point back, like, sort of back and forth between me and you and, and sort of give a, a question mark as if, like, which one? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll hit my chest like, like me, like I'll stay. Okay. And then I'll kind of motion for it with it, with my sword for him to go in. All right. I put my hand on his shoulder and sort of like a, you know, solidarity type of thing. And uh, and then head in after them. Uh, once they're both inside and making sure that no one else is coming through the window, I'll look at both of them and hold my finger up to my mouth. And I will drop silence. As you all come inside, you come into a, ki a uh kitchen that doesn't look like it's been used anytime recently uh it looks like a standard kitchen with standard wares but there's no food the fireplace is cold 
no real usage or sign of life in the in the room at all. So does it look dusty? Generally speaking, yeah. I mean, nothing overt. It's not like it's caked on. Right, and it doesn't look like any of these doors have been opened or disturbed the dust? Uh, not really. Interesting. I will go to listen at the door to the east. Intentionally listening, you don't hear anything from the other room that you don't hear coming from anywhere else in the house. But overall, use, utilizing your passive perception, just being in here, you, don't, you you haven't really heard any sounds of anybody scuffling around or any kind of talking at all since you came in through the window. All right. And is the door locked? No. I'm just going to attempt to quietly open it. Okay. Make a stealth check, please. Oh, that's a natural 20, which brings you- it up to 26. Uh, you ro- you open it so good. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so no good at opening doors. No one has ever doors. opened that door. No one has ever it. opened that door as good as you just opened yes. that door. I'm not good at much, guys, but I can open a door. I'm going to put that in your gravestone. You can open a door and break a window like no one. Oh, man. <laughs> I've got very few skills, but I've displayed all of them tonight. There you go. <laughs> She's done. What do I see on the other side of this perfectly open door? Uh, you look through there and you see a bedroom that has a bed in it that looks like it hasn't hasn't been made or used for a very long time. Anything else of note in the room aside from the bed? Uh, there's a door on the other side of the room and a dresser. I will check the dresser. Okay, make an investigation check. Oh, I sure will. Holy, I feel like I need a webcam on my dice right now because it just rolled another 20. <laughs> rolling more 20 in a row and I might have to make you start rolling digital. No kidding. <laughs> while, she, while she does that, I'm just going to go over like near the corner so I can sort of keep an eye on this room and her in that room at the same time. As you open one of the drawers on the dresser uh, and you start searching around, you feel something that feels kind of uh, like a ring or a trigger that's kind of vertical inside the dresser. Not within your line of sight, but as you're feeling around there, you kind of feel that in there. So I feel feel a trigger? Yeah, you know how like when you try to pop the hood on your car and there's that latch that there's kind of like a a latch? I'm going to attempt to see it without triggering it potentially okay make an investigation check all right uh, 13 13 you try to look down in there you can kind of see uh, it, it you can kind of see this it's kind of a metal wire loop that goes to the back of the dresser but that's all you can really make does, out of it does it appear as though it goes through the back like to the wall you take a look at the back of the dresser, but the dresser is pressed up to the wall, so you're not sure. I'm just going to... I'll step up and look at Gareth and say, uh, Do you think you could help me move a dresser? Gladly! Yeah, it's just that one, and I'll point at it. Where would you like it moved? Oh, uh, just towards the bed. would be great, yeah. I... I step wiggle back little, to little the other and... corner. I wiggle it a little just to make sure that I got the weight right, and then I move it carefully over to the bed. Okay, as you pull on this dresser, it feels like the dresser catches on something, and you feel something that the dresser is attached to pull taut. And Pooh, you hear a loud rumbling come from the fireplace. Oh, I wonder what that could be. And I, uh, I, I walk over towards the fireplace and kind of just stick my head into it and look, look up. Hello? You, safe. you see that the bottom of the fireplace has moved aside. Ooh. And there is a stair, there is a staircase going down. Hello down there. <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just a, just a gentle hello. <laughs> Uh, you get no response. I, uh, I then um, turn and I, I walk over towards uh, the door that the other two went into and I stick my head in just kind of so my head is the only thing in the room. Um, the fireplace has sprouted a, a staircase. 
uh, being reasonably assured that this dresser did not blow up when it was moved. <laughs> Thanks for that. I, 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 say, I love the fact that you moved to the other side of the room as he's pulling the staircase. Yeah. I, I mean, the, fire, the dresser. You out. never know. It could have been a bomb. Uh, I will f- I will follow Pooh. <laughs> I am shot in this fireplace over here. I heard a loud rumble. Sometimes it sounded kind of like my tummy does at some times. And um, there's a staircase there where there wasn't before. Well, that sounds like a- something we should check out, don't you think? I take a look. Is it lighted or is it something we can see clearly down? Or um, well, I can see clearly down anything, but... It is not lit. It is How far stair- can I see down it? It's a stairway to darkness. Do you have dark vision? I don't think you do. I don't think I Dragon. Don't think I do. I don't no. think Dragonborns do. Uh, no. So you don't see very far down it at all. Our box might be down there. Oh well, that's probably a good idea. If I was a box, this would be a very good place to hide. She did say it was casket-like, so under the ground seems to make sense. Should we tell our companion? Outdoors, what we are up to? Probably. I will poke my head out the window. So, Orbog, five minutes earlier, all of a sudden you realize sound is back on again. You can hear things. Okay. And you, you hear a lot of ruckus around the front of the building, but no one's poking their head around the, be- the behind the building yet. Like, people are trying to figure out why there's four dead bodies in the street. Uh, just more concerned about protecting them, so I'm just trying to stay close to the window. I'm not, like, looking around the edge or anything. Okay, uh, go ahead and roll a stealth check, please, if you're trying to be undetected. Uh, seven. Okay. I will say a young tiefling girl is it goes wandering between the buildings and looks around. She goes, oh, mommy, there's a, there's a man back here. What are you doing out this time of night? Mommy, he's scary! And she runs off. <laughs> I'm gonna... Um, I'm walking after her. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, like, trying to... Trying to... <sighs> thinking of, I'm trying to calm her down. Trying to, if anything, just get attention to me, not to them. <laughs> okay. Um, so you... You walk to the front of the building and uh, there's a uh, collection of probably about seven people in front of there, two of which seem to be the uh, authorities in from Waterdeep trying to investigate the crime. Uh, they see the kid coming out saying, Mommy, he's scary. And then they look up and they see a uh, half orc coming from behind the building. And they're like, you, sir, you, sir, stop where you're at right now. Well, I'm I'm trying to still carry myself very upright and use my position of privilege and uh, just act and, and uh, okay, I'll just I'll just say it. I'm 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 trying to act like I'm just checking it out too. My apologies. I just arrived tonight in town when I heard this ruckus and came over to examine things. <laughs> the little the little girl goes, That man was behind the building. Well that's where I heard the noise. He, he looks at you and goes, What noise did you hear? I don't know. It could have just been an animal. Some sort of wild animal that attacked these men. You heard it behind the building? Well, when I went to check it out it was gone. Perhaps we should go take a look behind the building to see if we can find it. Well <laughs> I it's not there. I looked inside the whole three-foot fence. It must have looked in and left out. You you looked inside a fence. The it was it's three feet tall. I was I thought something might be there. I thought something dangerous might be there, so I checked it out. It was fine. I looked at the windows. All the windows are perfectly fine, not broken in or anything. <laughs> what about broken windows? <laughs> oh no. No, I said they weren't broken. Look at me. I'm impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
Are you calling me a liar just because I'm half orc? This is racist. What is this? <laughs> Sir, I assure you that the police force of the Waterdeep Constable is entirely diversified and we carry no begrudgment against people of a green colored species or otherwise. I assure oh, you oh, really? that. Where are all these diverse creatures? I just, you're all the same. You all look the same to me. Cool. <laughs> all right then. It, it is it is plainly obvious that this man had nothing to do with anything that is going on, um, as he is a productive member of a very much appreciated culture. Thank you. And we 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 have nothing more to address here. Move along, sir. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to walk down the street until they're not looking, and then I'll try to circle back around. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and make an, another stealth check, please. Fifteen. All Am right. I at disadvantage again? No. Okay. Um, you uh, you manage to walk around the block and then just come directly back from the behind side of the building so they don't see you reapproach the building. At this time, you see Pooh's head stick out the window. And Pooh, what did you say? Uh, I, I believe it was Callum. Callum said stick that. out the window. Oh, sorry. I, I got I got so lost in that social commentary <laughs> that just happened. There, that... <laughs> right. uh, go ahead, Callum. Yeah, having fun out here. Not. In the least. Well, What's happening the in there? Case. Okay, let's go. I'm. All I've right. had it. I've had it without here. <laughs> you want to switch? I can stand out there, and you can go down the staircase. Somehow, I don't think you'll just stand out here. I'm very good at standing. It's one of the things well, I'm very good at. Okay. Well, I'm going. I'm going in. <laughs> All right. I don't. I don't want to have to deal with that again, and I don't like lying that much. <laughs> All right. It's real fun when you try it. All right. So you, know, you come in and you see the rest of them are standing in front of the fireplace. And as you approach the fireplace, you can see some steep stairs going down into a darker sub level. Who wants to go down the creepy tunnel first? I would be happy to. I thought you were standing outside. What? what? You said you said you didn't need anyone standing outside. I said I didn't think you'd just stand there. I can go outside if you want. You guys can have, you know, fun in the creepy tunnel by yourself. No, I like keeping an eye on you. You can go in front of me. <laughs> I said some mistrust between the two of you. Oh, I'm perfectly trusting of all of you. I'm going down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, so, what's what's going to be our marching order? I'll follow behind Pooh. Who is who is after Pooh? Are we putting Gareth? Me. Callum. Okay. Callum. Hmm? Callum. Pooh, Callum, Gareth, or Bog. I mean, if we were if we were actually actually talking about that in character, I mean, I could say that I'm the one with dark vision that I can see. Oh, well, Pooh's got dark the, vision. The too. only oh, one that see. doesn't oh, good. have good, yeah, dark vision back, is Gareth. Right? Yeah. I also have dark oh, vision. So. Nice. I'll just cast light on him, like on his shield. What's your What's the radius of light? It is twenty foot radius. Dim light. I've been called a dim light before. <laughs> Bright light for twenty feet. Dim light for additional twenty. So, Callum turns around and waves his hands around you and mutters something in gibberish, and all of a sudden. <laughs> Your shield is producing light. It's the broadest it's the broadest flashlight you've ever seen. All right then. All right, so you guys get to the bottom of the stairs and you come to a circular room with a hallway directly to the north of you. In the middle of the room there's a wooden dais that's in the middle of the floor that has something written on it. <laughs> so Gareth you're the only one who can actually read what's written on that dais because you recognize it, that it is written in Infernal. This message is written in Infernal. And <clears throat> what it says is 
Be careful of the things you want, for they may want you more. It reads, Be careful of the things you want, for they may want you more. <gasps> Sounds like my ex-girlfriend. Well, I want a snack. <laughs> so it wants me more. Mm-hmm. Yes. It doesn't so, seem like a magic spell, or just sort of a warning, or like graffiti. Roll an intelligence check. <laughs> oh dear. We don't want that to happen. Yeah, epic fail. Oh, you rolled a one. Yeah, uh, th- uh, three. Okay. Well, Usually, when you when you roll when you roll a uh, critical fail, that's going to be a one. Uh, but at, at a three, uh, no, you're not familiar with that that phrasing. But it sounds like something. Sure, it sounds but like is, something. Is it carved into the stone? Is it scrawled onto the stone? It's just written it's on wood, it. It's wood, right? Yeah, it's it's wood. Or, no, onto the it's it's written onto the wood. Mm-hmm. Not carved in. Nope, it's just not, handwritten. Like, handwritten. It's not a it's not a plaque that was put there. Nope, it's handwritten as if it was a reminder of something. And we don't hear anyone else moving down here, do we? Make a perception check, please. Oh, well, my perception wasn't great, so I think we'll go with the 16 passive, because otherwise it's a 9. <laughs> um, you get some vague sounds of shuffling, but that's about it. And we don't see, and we don't really see anything else in this big round room where, like, the box could be? Nope, just a hallway going to the north. Is um is this the box we're looking for, or is it something different? It's not the box. Perhaps well, we look elsewhere. A problem. Maybe if we tried to be quiet while we did it. Oh, definitely. And I I start sneaking forwards. Um, is oh, everybody true. going to try to be quiet while they go forward? Yes. We sure will. Sure. Everybody needs to roll a stealth check. That would be a 22 on my oh, nice. end. Hey, nice. 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 Of, a very stealthy. So we got a 22 and 19. Mm-hmm. Natural now, normally, 20. Normally, oh, uh, I expect the paladins to be the loud ones with their heavy armor. You got a 19 and a nat 20. I, that's not so much the case. And I expect myself to be the stealthy oh, one. Oh, no. Oh, dear. So that's a nice eight that I've got. <laughs> wah, wah. But as a group, we've. I was about to, I was about to say this, add, so. add, this was a group check. So as you guys, uh... <laughs> which as as a point of order, are either of our paladins wearing heavy armor? I um, am wearing chain mail. Ooh, so you're at say. disadvantage. Yeah, go ahead and re-roll that 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 nat twenty there, Steve-O. Fun, fun little D and D rules. It's... Your armor is too noisy to be able to just roll straight. Uh, a natural eleven. Yeah. Okay. I, a dexterity and, bonus. I believe I have chain mail too, so I rolled in. It's a seventeen. Oh, Perfect. look at you go. So you're, uh, I, I, w- I will call this a... I put honey passive. all over my chain mail. I start licking you. <laughs> <laughs> this just got weird quick, guys. <laughs> Mental images, people. Come on now. All right. So I will say you guys marginally passed your stealth check. Woohoo! All right. So as you as you go through the hallway to the north side of the room, it have some naturally occurring. It seems like you're leaving a room into a cave system. Is what it feels like. Uh, the natural it, it kind of is a natural rock stairway going up, and as you look up through the hallway going north, it makes a sharp ninety degree turn to the left. I guess we continue to follow it. That's what I'm doing. I'll follow. I'll yeah. follow a little bit behind. Okay, Pooh. So as you emerge from that hall, you encounter a lo- a large. It's basically a cavern that has several pits aligned in the floor. And as you approach, look at them. You don't see a bottom on them. Huh. And you notice that there are two, no, three openings on the west side of the room, and then another set of stairs that goes off to the right towards the northwest area of the cavern that you are in. Going up or down? They go up. 
There seems to be some sort of maze cave thing. Um, I will look to the party and see whatever else might be down here. We're just looking for this box. And we can get right out of here after that. Oh, would it look like that box over there? And I point down the hallway towards the end, um, towards the north. I would love to look at it, but you're blocking the way, Pooh. Oh, sorry. So if you could, I, yeah. I move out of the entrance of, into the the cavern a little more. I will step in and follow after Pooh. Uh, it's it's right over there, down towards the end. That spooky part. I'm gonna say no. Honestly, we're looking for something small and gray, like a casket. She said. So, Callum, as, as you come into the cavern, the large cavern, and what Pooh's pointing out to you is very obviously a uh, what looks like, as has been your experience, a treasure chest. I like money as much as the next person, maybe more. I don't, you know, I'm not going to judge how much you like money, but uh, I think there might be dead bodies in there, and I don't want to touch it, so... But dead bodies in the chest. I mean, there were people up there chanting to demons, so I don't know what they put in their chests. Oh, but, uh, that, that does sound rather ominous. Uh, but I've seen quite a few dead bodies in my day. You could open it if you want. Oh, oh yes, you I think I think I will. Uh, perhaps a box is inside that box. That would be very clever. Right, well, I'll just I'll just stand back here and uh, knock an arrow for no reason, just in case uh, uh, dead bodies come case. out at you. Yeah, you know because oh, yeah, yes. don't trust it or anything in here. Honestly, where is it that you see this? Um. Gareth, as you come out, you can't see as far as the ones that have dark vision, because all you can see is what's in your circle of light. But this you do true. see Pooh going towards the north. Ah, uh, okay. I'll follow him. I'm just gonna... And now I see it. Stay back here. <laughs> Never mind, I see it now. Oh! Do you decided to join in on the fun? I must warn you, I hear that there might be dead bodies in here. <laughs> I've seen a dead body before. Well, oh, that's that's exactly what I said. Would you like to do the honors, or should I? I step forward and uh, look to see if there's any locks, anything obvious that might be, you know, a completely obvious booby trap or something. So you're inspecting the chest. Sure. Okay. Um, I'd like you to roll a investigation check, please. Here we go. Ooh, that's a nine. Cool. I would like you to make a dexterity save, please. Or my, oh, saving throw. Okay. Uh, that's a three. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. Oh, no. So as you are inspecting this chest, it opens up to a flurry of teeth and a tongue, and it takes a big old bite at you. Ooh. I am, I am assuming that a uh, seven does not hit you. Yeah, it would not hit me. Okay. So you managed to just jump out of the way just barely. As, okay. As this living thing that was disguised as a treasure chest jumps out at you. <laughs> I would like everybody to roll for initiative. 11 for my initiative. 11 as well. Okay, 12. Uh, would I have been able to shoot it? I will say it's because not, you... It's not a dead body, but... Well, let's get our initiative here, and I will say that because you were holding that action, you had knocked the arrow, I will give you that... I'll give you that as a reaction. I'm going to shoot a nice little uh, arrow at it, which will come up to a 27 to hit. Yeah, ding, ding, only ding. barely though. Glancing I thought well. maybe, maybe just a little bit. Let me find the right dice. D8. That's eight points of damage. So right as the thing jumps to take a bite out of uh, Gareth, 
this arrow sails between Pooh and Gareth and hits this thing right in the mouth. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Orbog, it's your turn, then. I guess I'll just move that way. All right. You have 30 feet of movement. Um, are these holes that are on the bottom? Yep, those are the big old deep pits. Well, I guess I'll go this way, then. There. And um, I guess since I can't see too much, I guess I will uh, just ready. I'll, I'll get a spear ready. Just in case, because since I don't see anything too close to me. All right. So if anything gets near you, you're going to use your. You're going to th- throw I'll your drop spear. It. <laughs> well, I don't uh, know. I'm trying to decide how how much room. Yeah. Well, I just didn't know. If you want to hold your action, you can. But you got to tell me what 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 the trigger is and what you want to do. Yeah. I mean, just if I see something coming at me, I'll throw the spear. All right. If you see something, say something. Gotcha. Yeah. Just way to do it. All right, Gareth, it is your turn. I'm going to use uh, extra attack and do battle axe, battle axe. Battle axe, battle axe. Roll me two attack rolls, please. Did that work? Uh, yeah, the first roll, the first attack you rolled there, uh, you swung, but it, you barely missed it. Uh, you're kind of dis- disoriented because you're in the darkness, but you got mm-hmm. the bright shining light. And so it's like yeah. trying to, it's like a fist fight with a flashlight. Okay. Uh, the second time you kind of got your orientation down and you take a swing, you bring it right down on top of the uh, living chest there. Go ahead and roll your damage. Are you, are you, are you doing this one handed or two handed? Um, well, I have my shield. So okay, if, you, if you have your shield, then this is only one handed then. So go ahead okay. and roll that battle ax. Yeah. So you roll you rolled 10 damage. So you made a pretty solid hit on this thing and it's like it, it glares at you with just a baneful look in his eye. And it looks like it's just still raring to go. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Who? It is your turn. All right. Here we go. Uh does a non-natural 20 hit? Yes, that will hit. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, 15 damage on that first one. Oh, solid hit. Ding, so, ding, ding. As it's glaring at you, Gareth, uh, you watch as the bugbear next to you pulls out his... What, what, what weapon did you use? Uh, my great axe. Pulls out this great axe and just slams it into the side of this... Uh, I, I, I shove him aside a little bit as I step forward. <laughs> Yeah, and just <laughs> slams it in there. He's like, let me show you how it's done. And <laughs> let me show you how it's done. And just buries this axe in, in the uh, what would be the forehead of this chest. And uh, it, it it's very unhappy, to say the least. And I, I put my foot on it, yank my axe out, and go in for another, another hit on him. All right, roll again. Uh, 14. Uh, 14 will hit 12 damage uh it's looking pretty hurt like board boards of it are kind of splintered off and you got kind of this amorphous mist that's sort of leaking out of it at this point oh yes i think i think that will do it nicely anyone want another go and uh i just uh stay there all right callum it's your turn I would like to shoot it with an arrow, please, if I could. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. All right, go ahead and shoot it with an arrow. Oh, that's very, very cocked. Hang on. That is a the math. That's that's a math that I have to do. 18. Yeah, an 18 will hit. Uh, that's six, eight points of damage. You tag it in one of its four eyes, and it just starts leaking this amorphous mist out of it. It's it's looking rough at this point, and, it, and it's starting to kind of get get its. You can tell it's starting to feel its fight or flight senses gone. I would like to attempt to shoot it in its other eyeball then. Uh, one of the other four, one of the remaining three. Go ahead. All right. That is a math again. Seventeen. I hate math, man. Uh, yeah, seventeen is going to hit. Oh my good golly, Miss Molly. Seven points of piercing damage. All right, so as you uh, hit it with this other arrow in the other eye, 
it just hits and the whole thing just kind of splinters outward and then just dissipates into this amorphous stuff and then dissipates on its own and as it explodes out into this amorphous whatever uh it rains out probably about 50 gold pieces oh okay like a good pinata i try to catch them (laughs) look at that are you are you guys going to be sharing your funds or is everybody going to get their own does poo look like he really is you know going for them yes i I, i'll let poo pick them up all right poo you you go ahead and add 50 gold to your coinage it's fine it's not like i helped at all well yes callum that was a wonderful shot doors windows chest why you can take care of anything. Well done, all. Here, have a coin. <laughs> Just one coin. <laughs> yes. Uh, right. Callum, I'd like you to make a perception check, please. Yeah, I'm. I'm not advancing too quickly towards them because there's a lot of open doorways that make me very nervous. That is a 17 plus six. You hear a lot of sort of like moving dirt oh. and kind of some shu- kind of some shuffling and groaning coming from an area behind you oh behind me no I don't mean to alarm anyone but uh, something's moving this way oh maybe it's another fireplace it I believe it made some noises like that before I'm going to turn around and uh, place a hand on Gareth and say good luck and cast protection from evil and good on him. Oh, wow. And for our listening audience at home, go ahead and tell us what does that spell, what does that particular spell do? So until it ends, assuming that Gareth is a willing creature, he will be protected from aberrations, celestials, elementals, fays, fiends, and the undead. Uh, this allows any creature of those type to have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. You cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. And, uh, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. And then I'm going to just move right on past him, up this way. And with that... Just so we know, have turn orders here, I'd like everybody to roll initiative again. Oh. Really? Really? <laughs> a, a negative one. Really? A negative one initiative. I have never Good. done that before. For the listening yep. audience, I got a 10. Oh, for the listening Good. audience, I got a 19. Yeah, I got an 18. And and eighteen. I got a two. <laughs> I, I got a rock. rock. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, Steve. <laughs> and yet, still not last. So. <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, I'll just uh, put my shield somewhere where it's not going to bother me while I swing these things. This thing two-handed. And that shield does have your light on it. It does. Throw it at him. Make him hold it. <laughs> Well, I could put it on the floor. It would light the fair. area, right? Just be like, here, can you hold this for me? And then, uh... <laughs> All right, Gareth. Actually, no, let poo. me... Hold, hold on. Let me check a thing real quick, because I need to make sure the light's not concentration. Nope, we're good. All right. Uh, I think Callum is you the only... are first in the uh, initiative order here. Okay. Well, I will... Uh... You... So, I will say... You see Callum put his hand on on, uh, Gareth and be like, good luck, and just runs down the hallway as Gareth stands in front of the, uh, in front of, in front of that opening. And that's all the information you have to inform your current situation. Okay, well then I, um, know that, uh, Gareth didn't do so hot with attacking the um, mimic up there. Hell, let me lend you a hand. And I go after him, so that's one, two, three, four. Oh, right about there. 
as you come to the begin the opening of this tunnel, you do see what does appear to be a shambling corpse. Okay. Uh, so, go ahead. All right. So I just roll to attack him. I just try to take a whack at him. Oh, stay back. Uh, n- yeah, non natural twenty. That's gonna hit. Nine points of damage. That was that was one hit. Yeah, I'll take another another swing at him. Thank you, sir. I'd like another. That's a uh, eighteen. Eighteen's gonna hit. So that would be sixteen damage. Oof. For that second swing, you swing and you lop him right down the middle and open up his his uh, sternum, and uh, he kind of drops to the ground and motionless. But then all of a sudden he kind of picks himself back up but you tagged him real good you can tell gareth it is your turn so if all right you want, then if you would like to approach the zombies and swing at them you are welcome I'm to going to swing two times and you did say you're swinging this two-handed because you said yes. you put your shield away yes did that come out i clicked on it but it didn't do anything i right, clicked on it again yeah, go ahead and click. There we go. Uh, for the two-handed, you rolled a five for that two-handed. So, uh, five damage. But with the with that five, you are able to drop this uh, head zombie. Okay. As you, as you uh, take its head, cleave its head directly off of his shoulders. Oh, cool. And then I swing again. Now, before you are two zombies, which one are you swinging at? Um, the one that's that's straight south. Okay. Can I see any difference between them? I mean, they... No, they're just zombies. Okay. They're just shambling corpses. Somebody's okay. child at one point, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> With a tear in my eye. <laughs> Cleave its head from its body. Uh, all right, battle axe again. Go ahead. That's a definite hit. Go ahead and roll that damage. Here we go. 11 points of damage. All right. So you just hack this zombie and you you tail it, you nail it crosswise across its lower abdomen and its innards kind of spill out a little bit Ooh, yeah, as you that's... as you pu- as you uncork your axe from him. <laughs> All right, that's and uh, you got some movement left if you so choose. So can I stand in the way, but sort of in a crouch, so people could shoot over me if necessary? You... There. Um, you can stand there. Uh, someone can move through you. They just can't occupy the same space. So they're gonna have to go face to face if they want to fight without rolling at disadvantage. Okay. I'm surprised none of our paladins have used their specialness yet. What's the specialness? Divide. Oh, there's an undead thing, isn't there? Yeah. I'm sorry. Tell him. It is your turn. Very nice. I'm just going to, you know, move down very slightly and uh, give him a thumbs up. Good job. You're <laughs> give doing him great. a thumbs up. <laughs> Not a fan of the undead, this Callum. I don't mind him, you know. It's just that uh, why get involved when someone else can do it for you? He gave me something to help, so that's yeah. Good. You know, I'm, I've done my good deed for the day, twice. I also gave you light. Okay, Orba. Or is it is... channel divinity? Is that the thing? That is the thing. I will, I will do more than a thumbs up, and I'll just hold an arrow in case something gets out. But otherwise, I'm not doing anything. All right, Orbog, it is your turn. Okay, I'm gonna talk to Callum. Hello. Uh, perhaps. You go look for the box while we deal with these fiends. Split the party. <laughs> yes, Callum, do you want to split, split the party? Eh, just Listen, saying. I'd love to go through this dark place by myself. That sounds fun. Why not? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Shall I join you? I'd probably rather not, actually, with you personally. Fine, then I will dispatch them. Do as you wish. (laughs) All these two are in my way. I'd love to throw a spear, but... eh, 
I don't really like my chances. You just be rolling at disadvantage is all. You have the chance of hitting something. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, can you explain to me how the uh, how that works, the channeling divinity, as far as like, I mean, um, is there a range or anything, or I mean, it's been a while since I played a uh, paladin. It, I me... believe it's thirty feet, if I'm Let not mistaken. Let me take mistaken. a look at your character sheet. Yeah, no, I'm just really feeling like this is one of the reasons why, you know, this is part of the darkness that my group was afraid of, so I definitely feel like this is, I should be fighting, <laughs> doing something to them. 30 feet. 30 feet. I will, I will say something. Go ahead, RP that. <laughs> Uh, in the name of Heimdall Idris Elba, the one who illuminates the world. <sighs> and I'll do it. <laughs> what's your, uh, what's your DC? The spell save DC, 13. 13? Yes. You... You hold up your uh, holy symbol and you say what you say and two of them get this terrified look in their face. And they start going back to these holes that they had crawled up out of and trying to get away from you. But uh, this one was unaffected and he is going to move forward and take a swipe at Gareth. I don't suppose a 9 hits you, Yareth, does it? Um, armor class of 18? I No. I All right. So. so zombies are an utter failure. Uh, Pooh, your turn. Okay, so I'm going to get a little close. I'm going to go ahead and go in as far as squeeze in to this room as much as I, I can. So I keep going until I see a zombie, and then I go ahead and try to take a swing it at him. Alright. Oh, oh, are you running away or something? I will attack for that many. Which is... Sorry, I had to get... That is a nat 20, sir. Oh, boy, yes. That sounds yeah, about right. Too. So... I don't, I don't play by rolling an extra dice. I just do double the first dice roll. Okay. So a um, lot. Yeah, you just rolled uh, 22 <laughs> damage. So, uh, I mean, 24 damage, which you see, you see the zombie who has not been touched by anybody yet, and Pooh just goes in there and he's like, Hello! And oh, just hello there. hacks him and hacks him in half vertically. Like Conan the Librarian style from UHF. And uh, just both pieces just separate down the middle and fall to the side. It's a gruesome sight, to say the least. Oh, no, is there anyone else in here or who wants to fight? I uh, take a, like another s step forward to see if there's where the other zombies might have gone to. Uh, should I roll investigation? No, you, if you can see them, they're there. They're actively trying to get away from uh, or Orbog. Orbog. I only see the one that I attacked currently. No, you don't. I took the one you attacked off the board. Well, then... Does that mean I'm standing next to another one? Mm-hmm. Then I'll attack that one. All right. Does a 16 hit? A 16 will hit. 10 slashing. I just... I go for the legs on this one. <laughs> you hack off the legs, and he's just a torso pulling himself out around on the ground now. Made myself he's... a crawler. He is in a bad way. I've got one more back here, but I think I've got it under control. There's actually two back there, Pooh. I'm not sure why oh. you're not seeing the other one. Yeah, I only see the one, but I'll believe you. 
this. All right, Gareth, now it is your turn. All right. I will. One, two, three, and then hit this one two times. All right, go ahead and swing. Battle axe. 15. Yeah, that's a hit. You don't even need to roll damage on that because he only had one hit point left. So no matter oh, how hard right. you hit him, he was dying. And can I step like over him or on him and hit the other one? Yep, go for it. 18. 18's a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Did you get that? Yep. Okay. So you take your battle axe and you just plant it in the in between the shoulder blades of this uh, shambling corpse that is trying actively to get away from Orbog. Callum. And that's Pooh. my name. Um, well, I, did they just disappear into this room? They sure did. Wonderful. We're doing great. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to uh, step up here and keep an eye on the other two doors in case anything else starts to uh, come out. All right. Are there only two? Orbog. Well, there's one to the other direction, but... Uh, yeah, so, um, how many is left? Because I, well, I can't see him, so I don't know. Exactly. Um, I guess I'll, I'll move that way to help them then. As you enter the room, this, this one shambling corpse that has remained amb- ambulating, uh, is just shrieking and trying desperately to get away from you. Uh, am I too, cl- <laughs> am I too close to throw my spear? <laughs> no. I uh, I'll th- I'll guess I'll throw my spear then. If you want to step one square south to the south, you'd be within melee range. Was I? Uh, that's not too far. No. Um, I didn't know if I already did thirty feet. Okay. Yeah, then I'll use my sword. All right. I'm gonna use both hands. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Oh, I rolled a fifteen. That hits. Uh, 16, 15, 21. 21? Yeah. Yeah, you also cleave this thing in twain, and it ceases to be. Congratulations, you have solved my walking dead puzzle. Wow. A very nice job, Obog, and, um, Odell. Gareth. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It hasn't been very long since we've been together. Yes, excellent job all. Uh, where was that a Callum fellow? He didn't uh, seem to do much. We need to get back to him. Callum helped me. Oh, that's what he was doing with his, um, patting you on the back? Yes. A little bit more than a pat on the back, but yes. Good job. I'm assuming you're all alive. You look great. We are, and unharmed. Oh, not even a scratch. See, I knew you could do it. I knew I could do it too. <laughs> I did see something in one of these rooms back here. Me if too. Wanna to yeah. Check it out. Oh, well, that sounds good to me. It looks like another treasure chest, but... Oh, well, I'd be careful about opening it. Last time, you didn't fare so well. Absolutely. This one might also have dead bodies in it, you know. Well, we did take care of quite a few of those. See, I told you there'd be dead bodies, didn't I? And you are wise beyond your years. Did you don't hear that too often? Does this one look much different than the other? Are you inspecting it? I'm looking in the room. Just go and touch it, you know? (laughs) Touch it. Hey, I'll I'll give it a go. I uh, walk up to the chest in this room, and I just take my axe to just bring it down upon it. So I'll just roll it. Uh, 14. Okay, and go ahead and roll damage. 13. And with that, as your axe comes down and slams into this chest, some more amorphous smoke starts coming out through the gash. Oh, this one is also not a box. 
Would that uh, would that technically count as a surprise? That would count as a surprise round. Oh, because I get to do stuff. Because I have a uh, a uh, a uh, a. Uh, well said. I don't know. Surprise <laughs> attack. Oh yeah, uh, extra two d six damage. Go ahead and do two more d six damage. Gladly. Oh, well, that was quite nice. That would be 11 more damage. Yeah, so you just nailed the crap out of this uh, thing. The or amorphous. The, the, that is definitely not a uh, mimic. <laughs> so oh, this no, is different than the other thing we just met. I think that was sarcasm. It, it was. Oh, got it. All right. I failed my sarcasm roll. Um, gosh, I wasn't planning on you guys just opening every single tr- chest you find. All right. I didn't open it. I smashed it. We will continue with the same initiative order. Oh, give me a second here because I got to put the definitely not a mimic into the initiative <laughs> track. You're... Wait, it's not? You just said it. it wait a minute. Well, while you're doing that, I'm going to run and use the restroom real quick, so... Ah. Uh, is there one in this dungeon? Yes, I saw there's, one back. In the there's back. all those holes oh, no. right there. She's right there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, She's a... Pooh, it is your turn now on the initial tracker. Oh, that's a... A 14. A 14. Correct. A 14 hits. Go ahead and roll some more damage. Oh, that's only a... Uh, a uh, oh, sorry. A math. You've been like a trampion. A nine. So you hit it, and it's just it, it's just getting mad. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it wants a piece of you. But uh, then, I, be- I believe you have another attack you can throw at it. A 13, perhaps? A 13. Does a 13 hit? A 13 does hit. That would be approximately um eight damage. Uh, yeah, you definitely make contact. You realize though you're not hit, for some reason you're not hitting as hard as you had been, but you're definitely yes. making contact. And it's rather crunchy. It sounds like a bag of chips, perhaps. <laughs> it, you know, it does have a little bit of that sound to it. And that's all I'm gonna do. All right, uh, Gareth. You saw as Pooh brought his axe down, and this thing starts spilling out the amorphous fog that uh, you are very familiar with at this point, and it pops open with the flurry of tongue and teeth. What do you want to do? I'm going to step forward and hit it twice. Uh, First swing, you kind of swung, but it kind of dodges out of the way. But it maneuvers it so you're able to hit it with that second swing. Go ahead and roll damage for that second one. Were you Ten, rolling two? Right. Was it two-handed or one-handed? Two-handed. All right, so that's the eight then. So you you hit it with that battle axe and it just howls in pain. It's 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 already in an unhappy state. This one's going down quicker than the last one you guys fought. Wow. Uh, Callum is Callum back with us? You're doing great. Oh, no. <laughs> Golf clap. Um, do you think they need help in there, or you know, I just I feel like they're probably fine. So I'm just going to take a few steps down this hallway and uh, chill here with an arrow ready in case something comes out at me. Good. We must find the box. Are you trying to stealth? Oh, yes, always, all the time, first of all. Can you roll all. a stealth check for me, sure, please? Sure, sure, that doesn't make me nervous at all. Stupid Fourteen. Fourteen. Uh-oh! <laughs> yes, uh, oh, I'm, I'm dead! I've died! <laughs> okay, and with that, it's the treasure chest's turn. Bring it on. Uh, poo, evens or odds? 
odds, of course. It is going to take a bite at you, Pooh. Does a 16 hit you? Oh, yes, it does. All right, so it bites onto your leg. Ooh. <laughs> so it does eight bludgeoning dam no, eight piercing damage to you. All right, damn. And you, sir, are grappled as it adheses to you. All right, uh, it is now Orbog's turn. Okay. Orbog, you hear a conflict coming from the northwest part of the cavern as you had saw Pooh and Gareth walk into the chamber to the left. <sighs> I'm 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 torn, but I think Callum's gonna get into trouble. So I'm gonna follow him. And I'm gonna. I guess I'll be facing back the other way. Uh, I don't know. Gosh, I want to kind of be aware. <laughs> keep an eye on the. Keep an eye on both. Kind of looking both ways. All right. Go ahead and make a perception check. Yeah, and and sorry, I actually do have chainmail. <laughs> so. All right. Oh, good. Liar. <laughs> Uh, and I rolled an eight moving over there if that matters uh, with your perception check no with the uh, if, trying to be stealthy oh. although yeah oh okay there's that yeah he's coming to protect me he says yes <laughs> clink 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 well, fortunately kill him first they still didn't <laughs> notice okay um, they go multiple good Go I ahead and roll a perception check. Either 16. that or I was being non-gender specific with my pronoun. What did you say? 16. 16. Um, okay. You hear a little bit of flitting, flittering coming from the east. Uh, Tinkerbell. Um, sure. Batman. The eagles. I saw them with the Doobie Brothers. It, they were amazing. <laughs> All right, so we got we did Orbog. Uh, Pooh, you're up. Great, we've invaded the Hotel California. All right, here we go. But it's such a lovely place. Higher than a 15. Yes. Ooh, uh, six. Six, does a six do it? No. Um, this thing is... Like, it's leaking the amorphous gas all over the place now. It's just, it, it, the, its packaging is just falling apart. I'll get your pocketbook ready. Here comes the coins. <laughs> Higher than a 16 and uh, 14 damage. Yeah, it just explodes. Second. It throws a bunch of clothes at you. Clothes? <laughs> what sort of clothes are we talking here? Just... Some fancy robes. Oh, <clears throat> I'll take one of those and try try to put it on over my coat, the the hood that I already have on. Oh, Not like parachute pants? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it is it is certainly not hammer time at the moment. Does this uh does this coat fit any better? Uh no. <laughs> Great. You are a big bear in a small bear world. All right. Well, since I've killed him, I'm going to just uh, m meander over here again. Make sure there's nothing else back here. I'll end up like right about here so I can kind of see out what's going on out outside the room. You guys, you guys are after you guys have killed the uh, what was actually really a mimic. Um, a in, lot? in the northeast in the northwestern chamber uh, you see across the hall across the central the central corridor with all the pits in it um, that hallway that went to the northeast at the top of the stairs and Orbog and Callum are standing there <clears throat> in the middle of the hallway waiting for you I wouldn't and, necessarily say I was waiting but well you weren't exactly doing much of anything else either then were you 
I was offering moral support. <laughs> Don't underestimate the, you know, the power of a good encouraging word at a time so such as this. Social distancing. <laughs> All right. Well, we're out of combat then, right? Currently. Okay. Well, then I right. will make my way over to the to the others. Well, it was another one of those box thingies back there. And there was... Shh. What? What is... Shh. There's... Shh. Movement. There was... There's movement. Shut if it. We could, if we could if oh. we could move quietly again, that would be absolutely wonderful. I am the king of stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys going to stealth down this hallway? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll poo with all his coins on him. I I all motion that I'm gonna go first. All right, uh, everybody, roll stealth, please. Uh, mute my light. Hide it under can't. a bushel. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm gonna let it shine. Because <laughs> that light back, is based know? off of uh, based off the spell that Callum had cast. So there's not just a lot you can it. do with it. Callum, should I leave my shield behind? You should just you should just stay there for a minute, you know, and if I yell in a pained way <laughs> In a pained way. I will come to your aid. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sounds it sounds like I'm being hurt in any way, shape, or form. We'll stay back here and encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a seventeen. Alright. Eighteen. Okay. Fifteen. Should I roll also, just in case? If you're not moving forward, there's no reason to. And I am rolling like crap tonight. Oh, good. So Steve chose the dice. You're welcome. Good job, Steve. Everybody. I love Steve. Steve. I wanted Steve, to use my murder best. hobo dice. Steve, Steve, Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. Keep it up. Keep it up. I didn't say right. stop. Steve, so as- Steve, Steve. <laughs> Okay, so as you are approaching, you do hear some flittering about the room that's in front of you. I hate it when roaches fly. Seems very fine to me. Do I perhaps know what it is I'm seeing? Oh, do you see them? I see one of them just ahead of me, and he looks awful friendly. <laughs> well, you're there I right. see. Emphasis on the awful. It um, looks like, yeah, well... Ah... <laughs> Let me take a look here. I would like you to roll. Uh, you can either roll it as a intelligence check or huh. a history check. Well, that sounds a lot like intelligence and intelligence. Hey, which you is, know, I don't know where your proficiencies are at. You know, I'm so intelligent that I've got a zero in all of them. Oh, so. neat. Oh, but I rolled a 16, so we'll take it. Um, you recall somewhere one time when you actually read a book? Yeah, I do that occasionally. <laughs> um, hearing about... I'm sorry, I'm just picking... I'm just picturing your character as being something like uh, Pinocchio pre-Island of Toys or Land of Toys. You know, I don't want to go for... I don't want to go to school type character. Be careful about Disney. <laughs> to find one that talks her. Um, I, so, uh, I was going to say, like, you know, Bender from Breakfast Club, but that also works. Um, but, but you do remember reading one, some of the darker material when you uh, did make it to your classes, and you seen a picture of these once in a book, and you know them to be what are called shadow demons. Oh, heck and yeah. This is right up my alley. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Really? You're excited to actually fight something? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a shadow demon. That sounds like something that I'm so into. Um, so what do you want to do at this point? You can see them. It hasn't. It doesn't appear to have noticed you at this point. If I were to take a step forward, the chances of it noticing me before I do anything are high, I assume. It depends on what the dice say. Um, actually, you know what I'd like to do from where I'm at? I would like to use my hunter's sense. Okay. And for our listening audience, uh, what yes, does that so do? 
It allows me to choose a creature I can see within 60 feet and learn if it has immunities, resistances, or vulnerabilities. Okay. So you concentrate real hard and you really get attuned with the nature of this creature that's in front of you. And uh, you can tell that it's uh, it, that given that it's a demon, it's vulnerable to radiant damage, uh, but it is resistant to acid, fire, necrotic, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Sick. Um, and it is immune to cold, lightning, and poison. And condition immunities, it's a, it is immune to exhaustion, being grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, or restrained. Great. Um, I'm going to slowly just turn around. Turn around. To Every these. now and then. <laughs> I'm going to uh, slowly turn around to uh, Orbach here. And uh, very, very quietly say, if you could do, you know, uh, what you did before with all your, you know, religious stuff, I don't think it'd like it. <laughs> religious stuff. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Oh, okay. Um, do you have uh, another channel divinity? Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> My spell slots are empty. <laughs> um, uh, uh, or if not, I can take uh, care of it, I guess. You know. How, how many do I have? Oh, it's on your front page. I gave you a counter for your channel divinities. And you get uh, one per long rest, so you have burned to that. Yeah. Um, you are aware you do have another paladin in your group, though. Yeah, that's true. Also, other paladin abilities that are super good. Maybe beak face. Uh, yeah, well, if, uh, you know, you want to go in first, uh, I'll back you up. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth, you need to go in and do the religious thing I did. What is in there? Something unreligious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also going to cast Hunter's Mark on it. Okay. On uh, uh, which? Is, can you ping? Can you ping the one that you're you're casting Hunter's Mark? Yeah, on? I, there's totally only one in that room. I'm sure. So what are you guys doing here? So what do they want me to ch- channel divinity? Is that what they want me to do? They want they want you yes. to go in there and channel divinity. Yes. I well, okay. to be fair, I yeah. didn't say channel divinity, but you know, if that's what you want to go in there and do, like, so, is it pretty dark in there still? Uh, you know what? Do you? Yeah, like, or yeah, it's dark. But you know what? Go for it. You know, yeah, that's not good. Great. So is is this thing undead? Is that? Yeah, I know. If, if you want to see in there, I could uh, throw your shield into the room. Perhaps. <laughs> Are we trying to um, take it by surprise? Yes. I, I vote yes. yes. All right. I'll take a step forward, and I'm gonna shoot an arrow at it. All of a sudden, you hear a voice in the other room say something. Oh shoot! Uh, and Gareth, you understand it as saying, "I hear something coming from the tunnel over there." I think yeah. we're about to be ambushed. I'm just gonna take yes. a step forward and shoot, like. And you hear another voice go, "Right, we must hide." So we hear you. I didn't hear anything. It sounded like. <laughs> yeah, the only person who could understand who could understand it was uh, Gareth. Right. All right, and on that, as you enter into the room. We're going to use the same initiative order. I just need to put the Shadow Demons on there. Um, Pooh, it's, you're up. Yep. I run into the room. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I, I'll end right here. How, is he flying or something? Uh, he looks like he's about to take off. Okay, so from right where I'm at, I can technically, well, 
because I have <coughs> long, long limbed, so that would, from where I'm at at the entrance here, I should be able to attack him. Yeah. Um, so I will go ahead and try to attack this guy before. So I just run straight in through the entrance, kind of as I look around the corner, I see one of these guys trying to take off, and I just try to whack him with my battle axe. For the listeners at home, uh, what just happened was Pooh runs into a long kind of courtyard looking room with a fountain in the middle of it. Uh, and, and he sees two black winged horned, uh, creatures very much looking like demonic entities. And he turns and says, I say, I would like to rage. All right, you are a raging. And with that, I'll start my attack here. Oh no, no getting away this time. Ooh. Uh, so 23. Uh, yeah, 20, 23 is gonna hit. Just barely, uh, though. I mean, yeah, just barely. Figured. Uh, 11 damage. All right. You hit it, and it just kind of hisses at you, and, and it sticks it's, out its forked tongue. And then I attack again. All right. Uh, 17. 17 will hit. Okay. Uh, 16 damage. Reduced to 8. Yeah, yeah. So it hisses at you, and it turns around. And it rolls a... A 13? Does a 13 hit? Oh, just barely misses. <laughs> and this one's going to fly over here. Oh, two of them. Uh, does a 14 hit? Uh, that meets. So, yes, that does hit. So it reaches out with its... Uh, with its claws and it swipes down your torso dealing 11 psychic damage on you the one thing I don't have resistance to and that is the end of the shadow demon's turn uh, Gareth it is your turn alright let's see where I am I'm going to at least step to there okay I cast Thunderous Smite, and as I'm running down the hall, um, I will say my little catchphrase. <clears throat> you want me to do it live? If you have a catchphrase. I, I do. Mind sworn to valor, heart knowing only virtue, blade defending the helpless, hand upholding the weak, mouth speaking only truth, wrath undoing the wicked. I so hear Steve Rowe every time you do that. I don't know why. <laughs> Primitive rhythm machine. All right, so go ahead and roll your attack roll. Let's see, battle axe. Did that go through? Yep. Or am I here? Okay, go ahead and roll your initial damage. Did you roll single-handed or double-handed? It's double-handed. So, yeah, that's going to be the 12. Okay. And then roll 2d6 thunder damage on top of that. Uh, I'll just do those live here. Three and one. Four. So, plus an additional four. And now it has to make a save against that or be knocked back five feet. So yeah, they he get you hit him, and this loud thunder crack just comes off of this hit as uh, as Gareth lands this strike against this demon. It knocks him back five feet, and being knocked back five feet, um, Pooh, I think you get a, an attack of opportunity on that. Can I hit him the second time, or does he go first? Uh, you actually knocked him back. Uh, five feet, so you, that, that takes him out of your attack. Got range, it. But. Got it. Unfortunately, it's an eleven. 
does an 11 hit? 11 does not hit. Bah. So you take a swing, but you missed. All right, Callum. Well, that would be me now, wouldn't it? That would be you. You're going to sit there with your pom-poms and shake them? It's one of Go my team. favorite things to do. Um, how, they don't look like they are really uh, getting beat up too much, do they? Um, the one that, uh, the one that, uh, Gareth hit looks like it took a bit of damage. Like it, it's a little bit, uh, it's not stunned, but it's a little bit shocked at the amount of damage that he did, that he took. The other one, not so much because of the, right. uh, but you're aware that's because that all Pooh's doing is just physical damage, right. not magical. Um, I will uh, turn towards the one that I hunted, Mark, just to the south of me. Mm-hmm. And I will scowl a bit, as is my nature. And then um, my eyes are going to glow, and I will sprout some shiny, luminous wings. Ooh. And that's all I can do this turn. All right, so everybody who can actually see Callum right now, you watch as Callum, his eyes just glow, and these wings just start to form off of his back and sprout outwards. Um, is everything okay? <laughs> Never bad, been better. Bad seafood. All right, okay. so Good. Warbog, it's your turn, and he runs into the room, apparently. Yes, running into room. <laughs> I'm getting between uh, the two of them. If I use, if I use, um, since I get an extra attack, since I'm a paladin, can I do a two-handed attack on one and then a two-handed on the other, or yeah, like swing around like that? Yeah. Okay. Eighteen on the. I was doing the one on my left first. Okay. That hits. Okay. Thirteen. You make contact with it, but it doesn't feel like it did as much damage as you would have normally expect with such a hit. Go ahead and roll the second attack on the other one. Yeah. Oh, 18. That hits. And 13 for damage. Same kind of story. You're, you're definitely doing damage, but just not as much as you would expect when you might, when you land these hits. Yeah. Poo. I will, um, I'm still raging. So I'm just going to take another swing at this guy that stuck his tongue out at me. All right. I'll stick my tongue out at him as well. Uh, let's see. Higher than a 19. Yes, that'll hit. 12 damage. So, 6. Alright. And I will take another hit at this guy. Alright. Oh, that is a natural 20, my friend. Alright, go ahead and roll and double your dice. Uh, that is, um... Oh, that's a 9. 24 damage. Alright. I'm going to give you full damage on that because that's a nat 20 and no one likes to have their nat 20, nat 20 nerfed. So you get a hold, you, you actually get a hold of this thing and you just kind of pick it up with your axe. You just do like this golf swing and you just lift it up with your axe all the oh, way yeah. through it. <laughs> and you can tell you made some solid contact with something there. That's for sticking your tongue out at me. <laughs> and with the shadow demon's turn... Uh oh. It's unhappy with you for doing that. So this uh this uh shadow demon that you hit that is hurt just uh it tries to take a swing back at you, but you were ready for it and you just smack his hand away with the uh blunt side of your axe. No, thank you. And the other one was so distracted by the viciousness of your attack that it completely just took it took a swing at Orbog, but it wasn't paying attention. Orbog, you lifted up your shield and just batted his arm away. And Gareth, it is your turn. All right. Um, then I will go there and uh, hit this one. Okay. And do I? Am I? I don't know exactly how that smite thing works. Is that just a one-time it, thing? It's or? just a. It's just a one hit. So. Okay. If you want to do it again, you got to cast it again. It'll use another spell slot. Okay. Okay, I get it. Okay. Um, no, I'll just go regular. Okay. And uh, 
do a double double hit let's see here we go battle axe oh, might have hit that definitely hit go ahead and roll damage <laughs> you rolled a 23 for the audience at home did it roll there it is okay 13 damage so you hit it and it's sort of like with orbog you, you you make contact but it's not doing as much damage as you would as you would be expecting Hmm. Go ahead and roll your second attack. Did that even hit? No. Uh, you you were so perplexed by the lack of dan the lack of expected damage that you when you took a swing you whiffed it a little bit because you were weren't really focusing on what you were doing. Um, kill him. Oh, that's me. No, I'm going to do something unprecedented. I assume dare, so with your wings coming out dare last I round. Say. No, I'm just going to use a sword instead of a bow. Oh. I know, it's really exciting. It's just that he's just so close to me, so... I'm going to go ahead and take a swing at him. I'm going to start calling you Gabriel. Let's see, to hit that would be a non-natural 20. All right. All right, so it will be... 8 piercing... Uh, plus five for the hunter's mark. Uh, plus five radiant damage. You just beat the tar out of that thing with that one hit. Pooh, you watched as as your swings have been just kind of barely doing damage. You watched uh, Callum come in, come through there and just with one hit just smack the crap out of this demon that's in front of you. I'd Ooh. like to I'd like to hit it again. All right, if, make it happen. If I could. That is a natural 20. My, my, my. <laughs> All right, I, I, you know. No. Just, but just for fun. Let's see what we get. Okay. Well, that was a one to start with. Okay, uh, so. So that would be. <laughs> a two. Five piercing from the straight, straight uh, attack. Uh, that's a four on the hunter's mark, so eight for that. And another five radiant. That would put it at negative eight hit points. Oh. Cool, cool. And then I will... Uh, how tall are the ceilings in here? Fifteen feet. Um, so you, as, as you hit it with your sword a second time, and Pooh, you're standing right next to it when it happens, it just bursts into this dark cloud and as this cloud surrounds you for a brief moment you feel nothing but despair but then it dissipates and the feeling of despair just dissipates with the cloud um, that's I... all right <laughs> good thing it doesn't make you tired because then you'd have despair tired really sorry i will also take flight and move over the group of uh, party members over by the other one across the room. Okay. The other one? Oh, you know, yes, the other demon one. that we're fighting. Yes, got it. While you're over there, make a perception check, please. Oh, I sure will. <laughs> With such enthusiasm. 17. Um, you hear... A roaring and a loud pounding coming from the east. That sounds very good. Or bug. Well, I'll just keep whacking on this one, just doing what I can. Let me take a quick look at something here real quick. Your uh, branding smite, if you were to use that, does inflict radiant damage. Well, darn it. I guess I'll use that. So go ahead. Okay, so we'll say you're casting that. Go ahead and roll your attack. Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen does hit. So go ahead and roll your damage. So it's my regular with the with the sword, and then and then you do an extra two d six radiant. Two d six. Okay. Um, although it says plus, uh, it does say plus strength. So that would be, and my strength is four. Yep. So that so would 10. be ten. Yeah. Okay, so and, and then I do the one the two d six or yep, roll two d six radiant damage, please. Uh, six total. Six total. Yes. 
Uh, so that equates to. So you. You weren't expecting to do this much damage. It didn't feel like that, but as soon as you pu- bust out that radiant damage, it hits and it just sears the tar out of this de- this demon. It is in an unhappy, unhealthy situation. And yeah. I'm assu- assuming that I can only do I can yeah I can only attack at once, right? Um, you can roll your you can roll a second attack, but it doesn't have the it won't it won't have this yeah. Go ahead and roll to hit. Yeah. Just do what I can. <laughs> two, so no. No, I'm, two will I'm not guessing. hit. <laughs> uh, you, you, you were blinded by your own searing smite with the radiant damage that came off of it, and uh, you completely whiff, and it it laughs at you and just like <laughs> Poo, it is your turn. Alright. Oh well, I will um I'll run across this fountain area i guess and look over it at the the flying the winged whatever creature thing um and uh i'll look at him and i say you're next and i'll i'll attack recklessly on this one Ooh. Hey. Ooh. hey good uh, first was a six so bad no, second was a nat 20 so all right good now Go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage. I rolled a three. Wow. (laughs) I am so sorry, sir. That is terrible when that happens. I I, I got one good net 20. uh, An okay net 20 is is fine. So six. So it's, it's still 12 damage. Respectable. Um, so you, uh, bury your battle axe in it, and it's just like, <laughs> as it falls backwards and shrivels up into that same black cloud and dissipates. Oh, I did it! <laughs> you have solved my shadow demon puzzle! Puzzle! We've got oh. something else to the east of us. I wouldn't, uh, celebrate yet. Oh, what sort of something else? Something loud and angry. Oh, now, does oh. does does Callum sprouting wings sort of surprise anybody, or is this just something? <laughs> is it just me? Just me? Okay. Oh yes. Also, you seem to be flying. I don't really like to talk about it. Is it painful? <laughs> is it contagious? <laughs> yeah. If I were you, I'd keep my distance. I take a step back. Oh, I will. I will uh, make my wings go away. Okay. Are, so you guys, you they... guys watch as these wings fold up and disappear. And do they like actually disappear, or are they like yep. tucked away somewhere where we can't see them? They like evaporate into okay. incorporeal nothingness. Got it. Okay. And just from common knowledge do we know what this means is this something that would be like oh oh yeah my friend has wings um if you guys want to roll if anybody wants to wonder that same question feel free to roll a nature check i also want to know what i am (laughs) well that's because you're an angsty teenager just steve I, i yeah i did 12 Okay. Uh, the two people who rolled a 12, uh, nothing you're super familiar with with your past experiences. Okay. Definitely contagious. <laughs> Still as mysterious as ever. It, it does seem rather useful. It's really not so much. I'll take your word for it. So let's check out the east. So do you guys want to continue on, or do you want to call it a session? I need to work at 7 a.m. tomorrow, so... I'll probably call it a session. 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 All right. Well, that ends episode two of Playing Games with Strangers. Leaving our party in the middle of a dungeon, hearing something roaring and bashing on the walls towards the east. What will happen next week? Tune in, find out. 
Anybody got any parting words for our audience before we turn them off? Stay frosty, guys. <laughs>